Brian. Hey, Johnny, what's up? What's up, buddy? Long time, man. Yeah, long time, long time. You know. Holy shit! How long is it? Uh, five, ten years. <laughs> five, ten years. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe about. Let me see. Six, seven. Yeah, maybe about eight or nine years. Yeah, see. Holy shit. Right. Crazy, man. Unbelievable. Crazy. Now you get to live. Good in, to talk to you, man. Yeah. Now you get to live in Italy, right? Yeah. It's. Funny how it happened. I mean, it, I wasn't expecting it at all, man. Right. Like I came here for a came here for a clinic, and I never left. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I amazing. Holy shit, man! Uh, and how are you doing? I'm doing really good. Everything's going good. really well. I, I see everything's going good with you with uh, the new uh, Michael Romeo uh, War of the Worlds uh, Part One. Um, it's doing good, man. I, I think I, it's doing good. I mean, these days I don't know what good is, but it's got great reviews and. Like serious reviews, man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. Really happy with it, man. Cool, cool. I was listening to the album today. It's, it's, it's kind of like a, a, a trilogy or, uh, um, you know, something different. And, like, I'm listening to each track. And uh, as I go on YouTube, um, they have the whole album there and stuff like that. And, and like, yeah. the, the comments are amazing. You yeah. Know, you know, like, everybody's enjoying it. Everybody's loving it. Um, you know, everything about it, like the arrangements and, and the musicians and everything's fantastic, you know? Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Thank definitely. you. Wow. I mean, um, uh, we did two albums, man. Uh-huh. We did, uh, you know, uh, was I was, okay, he, he spent a long ass time writing this stuff and, um, he kept telling me, um, yeah, we're going to do a record together. We're going to do a record. And after a while, I was like, yeah, 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 right. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. And then one day, Mike calls me. And he says, uh, are you ready? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I think I'm ready to start. I said, great. So we thinking, like, where are we going to do it? Because he's in the U.S. I said, you want, I can fly back, or what do you want to do? And then I told him about my buddy, Simone Moroni. He's a, um, the guitarist for DGM, but he's a great studio engineer. Right, yeah. So I said, uh, what about if he does it, if he, if he mixes it and, and masters it? And Mike wanted to do it like he does Symphony X. You know? Right, yeah. And I said, for your solo album, bro, you shouldn't mix your own solo album because you're going to spend two years doing it and you're never going to be happy. He says, maybe you're right. And he hired Simone. So I just drove like three hours to the guy's studio here in Italy. And um, we did it here, but there was, there was 19 songs. Right, wow. Because we we were going to do two albums. Right. So uh, uh, we did it, and it kicked ass. And he's got part one, of course, is out. But part two is almost done. There's like, he wants to do like one, everything's done, most of the stuff. Right. But he wants to do like one, I think one big ass track. Right. And then I'm pretty much done with the drums. But uh, that's even a sicker album. That's a, like a, that's like a lot more playing. Right, yeah. You know? Wow. So I'm psyched for that one too, man. Cool, cool, cool. You know, I, I, listening to the album, there, there's a, a, a lot of great tracks. My, my particular, you know, favorite is Robots. Um, ah! <laughs> hey, are, are you recording? You want to do an interview now? Or yeah, you no, want to I'm, just... I'm already doing it. You're fucking professional. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. You, hey, hey, you should do this for a living. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Robots is a killer, man. He's been talking about that, like, before he even started... Uh-huh. recording he's like no I, this is funny man because um uh on the tour bus uh-huh. when i did the iconoclast tour i was filling it for jason because he, he got sick you know right. so I, I was doing the iconoclast tour and one day i think it was a day off and we went out and we were sitting at some cafe somewhere i was drinking some beers we were laughing and we started to talk about me and him doing like dubstep or drum, drum and bass type of shit, just like a duo and right. recording shit. We we, been, we were joking around. We even had a name for the band and everything. And uh, the funny thing is, he did it. Wow. <laughs> it was like a joke, but it came out great, man. <laughs> cool. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, the, like, <laughs> like I, I was watching the, the, the drum video that, that uh, you, you put out there with, um, you know, oh, Michael Romo. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. You, you don't get tired? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been playing with Labyrinth now for over a year. Uh-huh. And they kind of got me back into doing the double kick really fast again. Like, I used to do it in the 80s, of right. course. Yeah. And then 
you know, I got into playing more progressive shit. And after Ingrid, I didn't really do 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 anymore. Right, yeah. So they hired me, to, you know, they got me in the band, and I had to get my feet back in shape, man. So I started to play that shit again, and it's the best exercise, man. Yeah, and I bet just, you. You know, so I'm back in action. It, it, it doesn't only help your feet, it helps the whole body, you know? So, yeah. I, yeah. I just figured, that, like, man, I, if I did one song, I'd be dead. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know? unbelievable, man. That, but overall, you did the album. Yeah, oh, it's great. It's great. It's great. You know, great. well, you knew I was going to like it. You told me. Yeah. You know, I mean, you hear you hear everything, so I like I know you know everything, so I can trust your opinion. Yeah, yeah. That's why I wanted you to hear it before we talked. You yeah, know? yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely unique. Uh, you know, the musicianship is, is top notch. The songs, the vocals are great. You know? Yeah, he's like a guy. For, wait, you're in Jersey, right? right? You're in yeah, Jersey. Yeah. Um, Mike is in, I think, Hazlitt. Is that wow. close to you? Yeah, that's pretty close. And so is JD, the bass player. He's the dude from, um, he plays with Zach Wilde. Right, yeah. He lives like right near you, too. Yeah, I yeah. Think. Yeah, they both do. You know? Shit. So, so you know these guys yeah, very I, well, then, or what? Yeah, I see them. Cool. I see them. You know? It's, it's cool. You know? But, um, you know, so. What kind of training did you do to to do this uh, complete album? Um, it, you know, honestly, like I record a lot of records. It's like pretty much what I do. Right. You know, yeah. I play a lot live, but I'm more of a studio drummer. I've always been. I love right. the studio because the song is for life. If you do a great gig, there might be a hundred people there, right. and they might forget about it. You know, yeah. but <laughs> you know, songs are for life. So I got. I'm really like more of a studio dude. Right. And um. You know, when I go in the studio, I usually, I get the main groove, or I get the, the arrangement of the song, and the rest of the shit I kind of improv, or I ask the, the songwriter, okay, I'm going to give you three different ideas, you tell me which one you like, because there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of improv in the studio, I, I never 100% go in with things written in stone, right, yeah. but this one I did, uh -huh. you know, because he, he, he gave me the demos, and he programmed the drum machine, and he said, uh, I programmed it like you were playing it. Uh-huh. So, this, for the demo, you right. know? Yeah. So, like, a month and a half before, he sent me the shit, and a lot of the grooves are, like, exactly what I would do. He's really good with that shit. Wow. You know, Ingve used to do it, and Ingve would just press this, like, button that would go, <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> you could tell he was a guitar player. Yeah. But Mike, Mike really knows what he's doing. So, when he sent the shit, he said, when you record the real drums, um, do Macaluso, but just try to stay kind of close to, um, uh, like, my kick drum patterns. Right, In yeah. other words, if there's a triplet, don't play 16th notes, you know. Right. Try to stick a little, and then do your own fills and, you know, do some of your, your fancy shit. But basically, this is kind of how I want it to sound. So I said, no problem. And I went in, I went into him. Um, my rehearsal room for like a month straight. Right. I didn't play with anybody, I, and I just fucking wrote parts, man, right, like yeah. to fit his thing with my style also. And uh, so I was pretty much prepared. Even fills, I was. I'm going to do this fill because I I tried to follow, um, follow the orchestra. Right. You know, and it's the first album where, um, uh, okay, ninety nine point nine percent of drummers when they do a fill. They start at the little drum and they go all the way to the big drum. Like, right. bit a bit a bit a bit a You know, but not every, when you think about it, not every guitar run or uh, instrument is going, do -do -do -do, is going down. Sometimes, do -do 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 -do, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I said, why should I always do fills that way? It kind of changed my plan in a way. And right. It's the first album where I'm trying to mimic the notes on the toms. You right. know, trying to actually do -do 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 -do. So that took a while to do in a rehearsal room. Mm -hmm. So I, I did that with the fills, and some of my shit was pretty tough as far as the footwork, you know? Right, yeah. So I, just, I practiced my ass off, and I went in, and I did two songs. I did Jim and another one that's coming out on part two. And the deal was, we're going to send it to Mike at night. He's going to tell us if there was any corrections, and in the morning we'll get an email, and we'll fix those little corrections. Right, yeah. So... 
We sent them the fucking first two tracks. In the morning, the engineer comes to pick me up, and he's in the parking lot with a cigarette. And I go, hey, man, buongiorno. He's like, man, we got a lot of work to do today. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> he, and I thought he was joking. Yeah. Because I kicked ass. I thought, I was like, wow, Mike's going to freak. He goes, no, I'm serious. We got a lot of re-recording to do. We got to go now. I go, wow. what are you fucking talking about? He says, Mike sent a list of corrections. I go, get out of here. So we get in the studio. Yeah, it's a list, but it's not, it wasn't so much. Right. But yeah. he, was, um, he was like, uh, you know, on the second verse, instead of doing the same thing, try uh, second verse a little different. I don't like that fill. Put a new fill. And so that day we did the corrections. The next day, same shit, but the list got smaller. list right. got smaller. Eventually, it, it, there was no list. You know, yeah, but yeah, I had yeah. a heart attack the first morning. Man. Like, oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> but I had to do 19 songs. Man. Wow, <laughs> unbelievable! You know. Yeah, but I mean, long story short, this is the first album in years where I actually had everything prepared. Right. Yeah. Cool. Well, well, I thought I was prepared. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, but I'm I'm happy with it now. Cool. Cool. So, what's the difference uh, from working with Ingve compared to Michael Romeo? Oh man. Um. Uh, I know you told the stories already about uh, Ingve, so we know a lot. Yeah, of I mean, I know, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's um, I mean, I respect the hell out of Ingve. I really right. do, and uh, that got me through all the bullshit that might have happened. And right. after my years with Ingve, yeah, I thought it was difficult. Uh huh. But after the people I played with. After him, he was a fucking. He was easy. <laughs> I mean, I played. I played with some. Yeah, I played with some people who I'm shocked were so fucked up and like, you know, Ingrid's actually a sweetheart compared right. to some of these people. Yeah. So I was like, you know, when I look at it now, you know, eh, he's him, man. He's a genius and he does his thing. He's, he's opinionated and you know. Um, but he's like a firecracker. You don't know. Right. You don't know when it's going to explode. You know. Hey, yeah. Romeo's grounded. Romeo's calm. He's always calm. I never seen him freak. Yeah. And uh, he's a great friend, man. Like we hit it off instantly. And the way, like, uh, you know, I never met Mike before. Right. It was only prod. We played with him in Prague Power in 2001 when I was at Arc. Right. And I only saw them live once. I never bought an album. Uh, I just saw photographs, and he looked like a serious dude, you know? Right, yeah. So, yeah, so we talked on the phone, and he was kind of funny and shit, but then when we got together in New Jersey, in the, um, the rehearsal studio, to, to get ready for the tour we were doing, um, we start playing the first song. It was Iconoclast, uh -huh. and uh, right after it, he goes, man, that was really fucking sloppy. <laughs> and, and then, like, there's a big pause, and then he starts laughing, him and LaPont, wah! <laughs> and they shook my hand, and I was like, wow, that's cool, because that's yeah. the way I would have broke the ice. Right, Fuck yeah, with yeah. someone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, 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 that's cool. You know? wow. But he became, like, really one of my best friends. Like, we're really close, and I love the guy. Cool. But guitar-wise, um, he is a rock. Like, sometimes, uh, <clears throat> I mean, there could be great, great, great guitar players, but... To some of them, time is only a magazine, right. meaning they don't really have good time. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Romeo is a rock, man. You don't need a click. If you play with him in a studio or live, or studio, I use a click. But live, you know, a lot, of, a lot of bands, I use that click because sometimes they push or they, they, they go behind. He's like directly, perfectly on tempo. And um, it just, uh, he's one of, he became one of my favorite guitar players. Right, yeah. Like a really, really... Um, my big three that I've played with, uh -huh. uh, Ingrid, Romeo, and Jennifer Batten. That's right. like the three best I've played with, I think. Cool. Yeah, you know. But yeah, man, he's a pleasure to play with. I love the dude himself and his guitar playing. And he's got tricks, man. He's got tricks that are real signatures, man. Right. So, um, no, just a great fucking guitar player to play with. Uh, cool. And compared to Ingrid, you know, Ingrid's got his own thing. He's a genius. Right. Um, but he can push you where everything is really going ahead. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. And for for a drummer, that's kind of hard when you're playing fast because if you go faster than you're doing, it's like lightning speed. Romeo is always like in the pocket, no matter what, no right. matter how many people are in the audience. Like, you know, so tempo-wise, you know, I respect that. 
right. and a guitar player. Cool, cool. Uh, were there a, were there any songs that were a little bit difficult to uh, you know lay down the drums? Yeah, um, like you know me, like I might play. I got my own thing. Uh-huh. I shoot for my own style of drumming. I try from sound to playing. I try to do my thing, you know, and to do that and have that feel and sound. I um, I'm still old school. Like uh-huh. I don't do, I don't record the way a lot of these guys are doing now. Like metal has become almost like a dance album. You know, they're <laughs> yeah. quantizing it, yeah. and it's all fake and it's fixed and it's edited. I'm pretty much going blast the thing out, and if I don't do the perfect verse, I do it again and I do it again, and until I feel it's the perfect feel. And then I'll do the chorus. Like, that's how I use technology. I used to go all the way through the song. Now I'll just go for the one part and make it perfect. Right. But a lot of drummers now, like in metal, it's almost like 90%. They'll play the shit. They go home, and the engineer just puts everything perfect, and everything sounds like a drum machine. Right, yeah. So, like, that annoys the hell out of me. Because the reason people listen to Zeppelin still is because every time you listen, you get... It's like you're in the room with the guys, you right? Know? Yeah. So, um, so that being said, the the single we put out, Black, um, for some reason that verse beat was killing me. That pattern for some reason was giving me shit, and I was even in my uh, rehearsal studio. So I practiced it, but I didn't really have it great. And right. I said, ah, well, when I get in the studio, I'll, I'll have it, you know. And that verse, because I didn't want to fix it with edits, I did it over and over and over again. Just uh, the one verse took maybe three hours, man. Right, wow. That little thing. It was like, do it again, do it again. And the engineer is going, John, don't worry, we'll just move the kick. We'll just move it perfect later. I said, no, man, let me do it. So I did it. But we just copied it and put it on the second verse again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to play it again, man. You know? wow. So yeah, Black gave me some hell. And um, um, Mike is into polyrhythms. Uh-huh. Big, big time. Uh, polyrhythm is when you got two rhythms happening at the same time, but they're different tempos. Right, yeah. Or different signatures. Like uh, <clears throat> I use one I call um, Pass the Fucking Butter. It goes... Des- the first, the right hand goes dap, 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 and the left hand goes dap, dap, um, dap, um, dap. So together, that's the fucking butter. That's the fucking <laughs> butter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's a power rhythm. It's called three against two. Right, yeah. Because one hand is doing two, the other one's doing three. Dap, 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 dap. So Mike is into this shit, but his power rhythms are like uh, nine and 11 or something, you know, like right. pretty fucked up. Uh-huh. So the intro of. Um, what the fuck is it? The instrumental, uh-huh. not the intro. Right. What is it called again? The battle? Battle? Okay. Yeah, I think it's something with the battle. No, no. Ah, okay, the, sec- the, int- the instrumental song. It's like the third to last. Um, so there's a power rhythm uh-huh. in seven. Down it, down it, down it. One, two, three, four, five, on the snare drum. And then there's a whole orchestrated thing with just cymbal hits, so hi-hat hits that goes over that, which is a complete other tempo. And that gave me hell, man. Yeah. But that I worked my ass off in the rehearsal studio. You know, after I was done rehearsing, I would spend like 20 or 30 minutes trying to get that thing perfect. It took me almost a month, man, but I, I did it on the album. That's just, that's played. That's cool. not fixed. Cool, cool. So that was a bitch too. Wow. Uh, but the rest of it, like, was pretty much... um. It wasn't hard to do. It, it, was, it was something I could put my heart into because right. it was kind of, he wrote it. He wrote it like it was me playing. Right, yeah. So, wow. yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, tell me about this uh, next project you got coming up, Stone Leaders. Yeah, Stone Leaders <laughs> actually um, started a long time ago. I, I came to, um, I went to Croatia, Zagreb, and a friend of mine, uh, so I can book you a clinic over here. So I went to the um, Zagreb like music academy, right? Uh, like a college there, yeah. and I did a clinic. Um, but I told my friend before I said, 
uh, since it's not a drum college, there's going to be guitar players and bass players there. Can you get me a band that I can play with? Get me some guys that I can, uh, you know, we'll do cover songs because we can't rehearse, but right. we'll do good, good cover songs like Burn from Deep Purple and, uh, right. yeah, you yeah. know, like uh, I said, maybe Jeff Beck, Lead Boots. He says, I got the guys, no problem. Um, so I went over there and he plays keys. You might know him, Mysteria. I did three albums with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so, so Mysterio got me to gig, and he hooked me up with this guitar player, Ivan. Uh-huh. And Ivan also was singing, and a bass player, Marco. And no rehearsal. We went in there, and first I did my bit of a drum clinic, and then I called these guys up, and we did Burn, and we did like a couple more songs, and they killed it, man. Cool. They, they were great. I was like, holy shit, imagine if we rehearsed. <laughs> so yeah. so uh, I, um, I started to talk to Ivan uh, through emails and, um, you know, on the phone. And I said, let's make a record, man. Uh, so he goes, okay, we use Marco. And um, what I did was, um, I, wait, how do we start? Yeah, okay, so kind of like my solo record, uh-huh. I went in and I just did drums first with like a, a song arrangement in mind. Right. You know, nothing set in stone, but these are the ideas. And I sent it to him and he would write riffs over it, send it back. I would write lyrics, send the lyrics to him. He would come up with a vocal melody. And we did that back and forth for almost a year. And then I went to Zagreb to his studio and we, we recorded the drums. And then he came to my place. So we were like traveling back and forth. Right. And um, eventually, you know, Ivan was singing on it. And um, like, I didn't want a five piece band. Right. It's always a five piece band. And it, to me, it looks too proggy. <laughs> 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 so I said, wouldn't it be great if we can get a keyboard player who could sing? And since my favorite band is The Who, also maybe he could sing some lead. Right. Like, and you guys could sing together. He goes, I know a couple of guys that can do that. I said, fucking get him over here. So uh, this uh, guy Dino came down, and he did great. Sang keys and, uh, no, played keys and uh, also vocals. So the way we did it was Ivan did all the tracks, and then we had Dino come in, and uh, like for some of the heavier stuff, I'm like, Dino, you take this one. Or, Ivan, you're gonna, we're going to keep that one, but Dino's going to try this part. And we pretty much put him on after everything was finished. Right. And we used him on some of, some of the lead stuff or uh, harmonies. And um, so that was it, you know. And then, of course, Marco from the clinic was on bass. And it, it's us four. And we did the record. And um, I chopped it, chopped it, chopped it around. And uh, I got a couple of offers. But today's world is like, it's a lot different in the record business than, yeah. than, than why I, I was looking for deals. Right, like, yeah. It's completely changed. The offers we were getting were ridiculous. I'm just like, let's just put it out ourselves. Right, yeah. So we were going to do that. And then um, uh, a guy contact, contacted me from Germany, and we were talking about some other things like ARC and things. And he said, I know a guy named Dave Tatter, which you know. Yeah. And uh, I think he would like it. So I sent it to Dave, and... He's going to put it out. Cool. And it, it's so it is, and it's going to come out in, uh, I think, October. Okay. comes out in October. And it's, it's, it's proggy, but not. It's kind of dark prog. It's like the songs are only in there for some five minutes. It's not like ultra proggy. And it's kind of mid-tempo, but, uh, you know. Right. And uh, it's very deep. It's, it's kind of a deep, dark prog type thing. Uh, it's cool. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah. It is. I heard it already. Oh, you did? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting old, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot different than Michael Romeo's, definitely, definitely. You know. So, but yeah, it's good. It's a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit mellower. Um, you know, not as prog as, as the Michael Romeo, but it, it's really good. I, I enjoy Thank it. You. You know, I Back really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun listening to that. You know, I got another one, um, the Tripsonic Order, uh-huh. which is a great record. But the, the fucked up thing is, like, you know, 
I'm kind of known for metal and prog. Right. And this is, uh, it's, it's so different. Like, like, Ark was completely different because Ark was no rules. It was like, right. I'm going to play, um, uh, 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 you're going to play flamenco guitar and I'm going to do a, a double bass um, uh, thing in 7-8. Right. Yeah, yeah, we could do that because there was no rules. You right. know? Yeah. So with this other band, it's kind of like heavy, heavy, um, you know, fat guitars and a lot of really crazy drumming. Some drum and bass like we did with Ark, like right. Absolute Zero. Um, but the vocalist, he sounds more like uh, the singer in Living Color. He oh, yeah. sometimes feel, yeah. you know. And it's a really cool record. But I'm, I'm having a hard time getting some of these companies to be interested because I think because it's good. <laughs> but be, because I don't think they know how to pigeonhole it. Right, yeah. You know, like they don't know how to label it. Right. To me, that's great. But wow. again, today's world, nobody wants to take a risk, man. Yeah, definitely. definitely. You know? Yeah, I'll be looking for that too. You know? Yeah, it's going to come out eventually. Cool. Eventually. Cool. But the main, I'm leaving next week to go do some labyrinth gigs. We're going to Santiago, Chile. Cool. And we got we got some uh, festival, but no, not a festival. We got a pretty big gig there, and then uh, we do Prague Power. Wow. In Atlanta, are you, you going to go? No, no. No. no, no come on, come I, down, man. I can't go. You know, <laughs> I can't go. But uh, you know, it was, it was great talking to you, John. And uh, you know, you got so, much, you, so many things going on. It's it's amazing, and that uh, Michael Romeo. Uh, is out of this world that album, and uh, congratulations to him too. Let me congratulate him. Hey, and I'm you. glad, man. You know, so. I'm, I'm really glad you like it. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, on a scale of one to ten, what do you give me? A ten. For us. A ten. You give us a ten? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Cool, cool. Would you like to say anything to the fans out there? Uh, thanks for listening. And there's a ton and ton and ton of stuff coming out, like. Uh, a lot of bands and, and, and musicians are kind of fed up with making records these days. And I'm on a mission. I'm going to keep pumping them out no matter what happens. So thanks for listening. Cool, cool. Thanks a lot, John. I'll talk to you later, man. Thanks, brother. Bye-bye. Ciao.